Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be looking at how you can make a debris tool using geometry nodes. So most of the times when a wall is old and uh, is getting destroyed or maybe some pieces are falling off, you see that most of the pieces are scattered near the wall and uh, they spread out a little bit uh, as you might see in these images. You can especially for this here, this really shows it very well. Uh, you can even see it here. Uh, most of the pieces are scattered next to the wall and then they spread out a bit. We're going to make a tool that does that. You can even see I added some grass that grows onto the wall and this is all procedural. So if I edited my wall and, and uh, extended it, you can see that these also grow with it. Only the areas where the wall is are getting that. Let me just hide this. Yeah, only we're only sp scattering the pieces next to the walls. So with this setup, if you have a ground, you want to scatter these on, you can do that so that this is scattered on a ground edited. So I'll just select this and push it up. You can see this updates, the grass updates to follow that. These are just different instances of the instancer, but with a different instance object. So like, let me turn off the grass. You can see we have the debris, you can uh, we have the small debris, we have the light debris. Let me, let's just look at the small debris. You can see that there's a lot of things you can adjust here, like uh, the density, the spread, how far the debris is going to go, uh, or how close the debris is going to be scattered from the wall. Uh, so this is just going to be the wall offset. So if I bring that to zero, uh, maybe of this to a negative value, you can see that I can bring this even closer. You can layer multiple detail to this. So, so the project files is going to be on my Gumroad page, Patreon, and my YouTube membership page. If you want to explore this and use it in your own projects, you can switch out any of these assets and uh, just create another instance of uh, this. So I'll just shift D to duplicate that and uh, change the seed. And I'm also going to change the object, the instance object to this branch. So you can see you can layer a lot of a bunch of detail just like that to make the render look more detailed. The way we're going to approach this is we're going to scatter some points or some lines outwards like that, going outwards like that. And that will be our spread. So when we scale them, we can determine the spread, we can scale them down, we can scale them up, and then we can use the, the ray cast to push them to the ground so that they're all on the ground like this, and then we can turn them into points. So let's do that. First, distribute points on faces, and if I instance on points and use a line, let's use a curved line, and use the rotation into the rotation, you can see we're getting points all the way and uh, bring back my wall for now. We don't want these points facing up. We only want the ones going sideways and uh, this side. So let's create a selection. We're going to grab the normal and use vector math with the dot product of our vector facing up. If we look at this, you can see that uh, we are getting all the points that are facing up and we also have some that are being selected that are facing in this direction. So let's use a compare node and just make sure that we are go we're only getting the ones facing up. Now we need to also get the ones facing down. So we just do the same, but this time negative one use a, another compare node and we get that we can use a boolean math a boolean math with the operation of o to mix this so that we are selecting the top and the bottom part if we plug this okay so yeah just plug it into the distribution just like that i can call this Ctrl J, I can group this and call this selection, give it a color, just like that. Also, let me just have this here. Uh, but we want the inverse of this, so I'm going to duplicate this and use 
not. Yeah, so we have our lines just like that. And before we merge here, we can realize these and turn them into points. Curve to points. So you can see our points. Now, we want to push these down to the ground. So we need a grid that is going to be our ground. I'm just going to scale this to be really big, just like that. And we can use the raycast, uh, this ground being our target. And so what is going to happen is that these points are going to shoot a ray downwards. And when they hit our ground, they're going to move to that ground. They're going to get take up the position of that hit point. So we can, uh, let me just make some space here. So we can use a set position. So if, if we have a hit, if these points hit the ground, we can use that hit point as the new position. And you can see what we're getting. So if we look at our grid, yeah, you can see these points. I would have to bring this grid as well so that we can see it. Yeah, you can see now these points are flat, are settled onto our ground, which is exactly what we want. But our ground should be at the bottom here, at the base of our object. The problem is, it's using the origin of this object, which is here as its position. So if we move this down, if I use a set position and move this down, you can see, uh, let me make sure that I'm previewing this. Random colors. Yeah, you can see that I can easily move this with the ground. But we don't want to do this manually. We want to be able to detect the bottom position of this object. So what we can do is, so what we can do is grab the position, which is basically grabbing the position of each point on this, of each vertex on this, on this object. And uh, we need to capture that here before we alter this to turn it into points. So we need to capture the vector position and that's what we're going to bring in. You can use the attribute statistics, bring in this geometry and actually if you're using the attribute statistics, you don't even need to capture this. You can just drag the geometry directly from the input and uh, use this as the attribute. So this has to be a vector, connect that and we want the minimum. Now, with the minimum, we can just plug this into the offset and you see that this has moved to the bottom of the mesh. So if I go into edit mode, I select these faces and move them up, you can see that uh, the, the mesh will always be at the bottom. Uh, you can make sure that this is large enough to capture the spread of our particles, just like that. And uh, this is not going to be rendered, uh, the grid is not going to be rendered, so I'm going to remove that so that we have just that. Now, if I want to spread these particles out, all I have to do is find my line here and just spread that, just like that. But you can see that uh, they're all being spread in a grid. To increase the point, we can just increase the count here the point count here and uh, you can even increase the distribution just like that and you can also use a set position add some noise let's make some space here add some noise into the offset 
that way we can break up the, rep the repetition. Uh, but remember, we need to subtract the offset that comes from uh, the noise, so minus 0.5. And uh, we can scale up the influence of this to spread these particles around. Again, if you want less spread, you just bring this down. And uh, we can reduce the point count just like that. And now this can be anything you want. Actually, I think I've made this even better than uh, the one I did. So now with that, we can turn this into anything we want. So we can come over here and just use an instance on points, on points, and let's say bring in our rock as the instance. Seems we have too many. So I'm just going to randomly remove some using the random value with a probability and just bring this down. Now, one other thing we could do is uh, we can scale this down using a noise texture. So plug this in there, use a, use a math node with a subtract, subtract 0.5 and I can add a math node, the multiply to scale this up. We can also create a random rotation. A random rotation, just use a vector, plug that into the randomness and just create some random values. One other thing we could do is create a gradient so that the, the particles nearest to the wall are larger than the particles far from the wall because usually when things break up, break off, uh, they just, the largest piece will fall directly down and the smallest piece will likely fall and then bounce away from the wall, just like that. So let's try to do something like that, that mimics that. So to do that, we need to go back to our mask uh, I think, yeah, this here, if we look at this, you can see we have this mask. And actually, I want it here. Uh, I want this one here, where we have just the bottom. I can use that to create a delete geometry. Use this as our selection. And let me grab this group input, which is just the original mesh this bring that in here and uh, look at that now we have deleted the opposite of what we want so i'm just going to use a uh, boolean math with not so that we have this now i can use a proximity proximity node to calculate the distance so if i look at this and the particles i can use a map range map range so let's say to now I can multiply this distance to this and it seems we have the inverse of what we want so I'm going to just flip this range that way the smallest particles are far from from the wall so and uh, uh, it seems we have particles going inside our wall. Uh, that's, that's likely a result of uh, this noise we added. Uh, this, where is the noise? Yeah, this noise we added. So if I bring this to zero, you should see that uh, when we spread these particles, they go through, they go under the wall. Uh, it, I don't think it's a big problem, but if you don't want any of those, you can still use the this 
this range to delete some of the instances. So I can use add delete instances, use this and use a ramp, a car ramp, change this to constant. If you just look at this, I can delete the particles that are under the wall so that we have no particles inside the wall and that's what we have if you want this tool links are going to be in the description you can, you can get it on my patreon page gumroad and my youtube membership page thank you so in our next tutorial we're going to be looking at how to make a procedural destroyable bridge uh, that has physics and uh, let me just put these barriers here and you can see this is uh yeah so yeah if you want to watch something like this and uh, more practical tutorials of video effects and geometry nodes uh, make sure to subscribe and turn on notification this is going to be our next video and the project files are also going to be available on my patreon and my camera page uh, basically we make this bridge is a procedure with geometry nodes we can uh, make the ropes thicker you can make them smaller you can do a bunch of things you can uh, add more vertical ropes by just extruding these and uh, just make and make them look more interesting yeah so you can do a ton of things edit this and make it look better so yeah if you want to learn how to do this we're going to be looking at that in the next video thanks for watching